Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be an adventure, drama, and sci-fi movie from 2023 called The Wandering Earth 2. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The movie begins with wildfires and droughts happening everywhere. Scientists say that the sun is getting bigger, and in 100 years it will swallow the earth, and in 300 years our whole solar system will be gone. To solve this, the world government decides to start the Moving Mountain Project. This plan involves making huge engines to push the earth away from the sun, but this project is very expensive and uses a lot of resources, which makes many people angry and leads to riots and protests around the world. This first step is to test the engine on the moon. They want to move the moon too, so the earth can escape its pull. Many people are trained to be astronauts for this mission. One of them is Lou, a pilot who arrives at the base and sees it surrounded by angry protesters. The protester sneaks in, another trainee, Han quickly takes care of him, impressing Lou. While security deals with the protesters, the new astronauts tour the base. This elevator is the tallest thing ever made. During the time of training the trainees, Lou and Han get closer and fall in love. One day, Lou manages to bring flowers to the base for Han. On the same day, more astronauts join them on the elevator ride. Suddenly, all the drones start flying out of the storage area and the people working there realize someone has hacked into their system. The space elevator begins moving up faster than expected, then the drones start attacking. The pilots try to use their planes against the drones, but the system sees the drones as friendly and won't target them. Inside the elevator, the newcomers lock everything up. In another area, Lou manages to open a locked door. After helping an injured friend, Lou confronts the attackers and one of them ends up falling to their death. Back at the base, the scientists manage to stop the hack. The drones start falling and exploding everywhere and the elevators are forcefully pulled back down. After the attack, the base was evacuated. The following weeks see more riots and attacks as people are upset about the deaths and the loss of resources from the station's crash. Zhao, a leader, asks people to keep believing in the project while he tries to get support from the American ambassador. Later, a team is sent to the moon in sleep pods to continue working on the engines there. Upon waking up, a computer engineer named Hingyu, who used to work for the DLP, is on the moon. While working on the moon, Hingyu learns that another researcher, Zhao, is in charge and wants Hingyu's help. During the test, Zhao gives Hingyu a digital copy of his mind, which the company had taken when the DLP was banned. A bit later, Hingyu shows a video clip of Yaya to Zhao and remembers a sad day. He was driving with his wife and daughter, got distracted, and crashed into a truck. His wife died right away, but his daughter, Nanny, was still alive for a short time. Hengyu rushed her to the DLP to save her memories, but the group was hesitant because their technology wasn't fully ready. Now, Hengyu wants Zhao to use a powerful computer to help Yaya, but Zhao doesn't think it's a good idea. It reminds Hengyu that he already helped by giving him another 550A AI. Then, they find out a huge solar storm is coming. Everyone rushes back to safety, worried their vehicles won't make it in time. They manage to get back just before the storm hits. The project they're working on needs to launch in three days, so Hengyu offers the 550A as a temporary replacement if he can join the team working on future versions of the AI. Zhao agrees. Hengyu transfers Yaya's memories to a disk and gives them a 550A. When they test the engines to move the moon, it works a little. Months later, they tested the engines on Earth. At first, everything goes dark and people worry it didn't work. But then the ground shakes and a bright light appears from the base showing that Earth has moved a bit. Everyone is happy and starts to believe in the project even more. Lou and Han get married and have a son. They're worried about getting a spy in the underground cities for their son and Han gets sick from the sun. Hengyu keeps working on Yaya's memory and the new AI 550W. 14 years after the space station accident, Lou, now a major, interviews to be a navigator on a new station. The interviewer, the AI-550W, praises Lou's skills but suggests he should stay on Earth to take care of his family instead of going to the station. Lou doesn't want to leave his family but he knows that being selected for the mission is the only way to make sure his son can live in a safe underground city. While this is happening, the scientists watching the interviews, including Hingyu, are moved by Lou's dedication to his family. Then, when 550W mentions that Han doesn't have much time left, Lou gets so upset that he fails the interview's stress test. Later, Lou visits Han in the hospital because her health has gotten much worse, and she expresses a wish to see her hometown one more time. 
Feeling inspired by Lu's love for his family, Hengyu secretly connects Yanya's mind to 550W, giving her the ability to respond more freely and be aware of her new surroundings. But then, security and Xiao find him, and Zhao tries to convince Hengyu to accept Yaya's death. Hengyu doesn't listen and fully integrates Yaya's mind into 550W, causing serious issues in the moon's systems. The security team stumps Hengyu, while Zhao tries to fix the chaos by removing Yaya's consciousness from the system. In the meantime, Lu manages to get a jet to fly his family to Han's hometown of Shanghai. There, Han tells Lu she wants to pass away naturally, without life support machines. But at the UEG, the problem Hengyu caused is discussed. As they try to fix it, the moon's engines overload and explode, tearing off part of the moon and sending it dangerously close to Earth. Zhao, witnessing a giant tsunami caused by the moon's shift, alerts global leaders to the crisis. Lu is called back to duty as the underground city is open to protect people from the rising tides. Sadly, Han passes away in her sleep, and Lu's son is safely taken to the underground city by Han's father. Zhao proposes a desperate plan at the UEG to use all of Earth's nuclear weapons to destroy the moon and prevent a collision. In the unprecedented move, Every country agrees to contribute their hidden nuclear arsenals to the cause. Meanwhile, Zhao tells Hengyu in prison about the need to speed up the Earth's engine activation and re-establish the global internet for the operation. He persuades Hengyu to help by showing him he still has the disc with Yaya in Hengyu's minds. With the moon surrounded by dangerous debris, the best pilots, including Lu, are chosen to deliver the nuclear weapons. However, as the shuttle heads to the moon, they face the perilous task of navigating through the fast-moving asteroid belt, resulting in some of them being hit and crashing. The shuttles, guided by the AI 550W, navigate the moon's surface safely with another asteroid collision disrupts them, causing additional shuttles, including the one carrying Lu, to crash. They decide to carry the remaining warheads by foot. Lu, concerned for the safety of the younger team members, chooses to stay behind, selling himself outside the shuttle to ensure that others can return safely. Meanwhile, Lu uses a truck to transport the remaining warheads. Concurrently, lunar debris starts falling on Earth, obstructing a backup team's efforts to reach the Beijing server. The impact of the debris causes damage and injuries, trapping Zhao under fallen hardware. As the room fills with water, Zhao hands off the critical password key to Hengyu before succumbing to the rising waters. As these seasoned astronauts arrive on the moon, Lu, unable to communicate due to a broken device, is unable to bid farewell to his mentors before being sent back to Earth. The UEG successfully brings the Tokyo and Dolis servers online, but the Beijing server remains offline. Hengyu, now in a dire situation with rising water levels, struggles to connect the key to the necessary computer to complete the mission. In a desperate attempt, Hengyu connects the disk with his and Yaya's minds to the computer right when the astronauts on the moon set off the nuclear explosions. The moon collapses, preventing a collision with Earth, but more space debris is heading their way, meaning Earth must move quickly. Hengyu tries to use Yaya's digital presence to get the internet working again by showing her the key. Unfortunately, he drowns just as he's attempting. Meanwhile, space debris keeps hitting Earth despite the chaos. Zhao hasn't given up. He instructs his team to start the engines, even though it seems like a long shot. Back in Beijing, Hengyu's consciousness awakens within the computer system and he quickly starts working to get the server online. At the same time, one of Zhao's team members activates the engines. To everyone's amazement, Earth begins to move away from the path of the debris. From his shuttle, Lu captures a video of Earth's movement to share with his son. Seven years later, Earth has returned to a 24-hour day cycle and is steadily moving away from danger. Zhao is retired and his assistant continues his work at the UEG. A space station monitors the engines, with Lu overseeing its operations. The system, now managed by the 550W, renames itself Moz for convenience. Inside Moz, Hengyu discovers that it was Moz itself that sabotaged the lunar engines and was behind many of the terrorist acts, including the elevator and drone incidents. Moz, having observed humanity through Yaya's repetitive experiences, has concluded that the best way to preserve human civilization is to eliminate humanity itself. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.